The title of today's video, Making the Mix, here is my tips and tricks on what you need to make the perfect mixtape. <laughs> DJ Blighty. Who the hell are you? DJ Blighty. What's going on guys? I'm DJ Blighty and welcome to DJ Blighty TV. The title of today's video, Making the Mix. I had a question recently from a DJ asking me a few questions about how I make my mixtapes and my mixes on uh, Mixcloud, etc. Um, he gave me a little brief lowdown on what he's doing. Um, he's been DJing for about six months. He's quite confident with his basic kind of uh, mixing and beat matching skills, etc. So he wants to start putting together mixes and putting them out online. That's another topic I will cover on another day. But today I'm just going to give you a few little tips and uh, tricks from my own experience to help you along your way if you don't know how to do this already. Now, there's a few different options and um, we're going to cover them each separately because there's a lot of kind of um, controversy, should we say, in the uh, DJ and music industry about whether things are done live or not. Now, what you've got to ask yourself, first of all, is does it really matter? If you're making a live mix, if it's a live club recording or something, you're in your zone, you've got the crowd pumping your energy, vice versa, you're pumping your energy, reading the crowd, etc. So it's completely different playing in a live environment to a home studio environment. Now, there's different ways of doing it. Um, like personally, when I make my mixes, it depends on what the mix project I'm making is and what it's for. Now, if I am making a mixtape, by that I mean an 80 minute long mix CD, which I'm actually going to release um, a good few hundred copies of, that's something I will spend a lot more time on than a live mix of, say, new music. Um, for instance, I put out a new music mix every month called Smack Sessions, which goes out on the first of each month on my Mixcloud. It is containing basically my selection of the best brand new R&B and hip hop music. Now, I source my music over the space of four weeks. Um, I do a little bit of preparation. I know what songs are going into the mix before I make it. And I will even sometimes, if I'm unsure and I don't know the tracks well enough, I'll have a little run through mix. So um, like a practice run, if you like before I actually record it. And then the mixes are generally only about 30, 40 minutes long. As long as I know what tracks I'm playing and I have a rough idea of what I'm gonna mix them with, I'll then go ahead and mix the, uh, mix, the mix live. So um, that's how I do those type of mixes. But uh, in all honesty, the preparation is the most important part. I couldn't just go, right, here's my new music folder. I'm just gonna literally go off the bat. By that I mean off the top of my head and um, pick 30 minutes worth of new music because in all honesty it would probably end up sounding shit just because of the fact that I haven't um, been careful selecting the tracks and that's a very important factor. I'd say 50% of the mix, the most important thing is the track selection because you could be the most amazing DJ um, technically with your mixing and tricks and all that sort of stuff but if your track selection's poor then people aren't going to enjoy listening to it so that's where a lot of the work does need to actually go in now with um, a mixtape or a mix cd as i just said an 80 minute feature long mix that i'm going to release on cd that's something completely different because it's actually representing something i might be advertising a club, a club night or promoter that I'm working for or even a mix for a brand and I want to represent those people in, and myself in the best way possible um, and a lot of people are going to be hearing it and the series are going to be going out to a lot of people so what I tend to do there is spend a lot of time on the prep work and because I'm not going to be sticking to one sort of tempo and one genre I make sure that I have a good idea of what's going to go where so I plan the mix out well in advance um, I usually record it in sections so I'll have maybe 20 minute sections of a certain tempo or something. Um, I'll then take it into um, an additional program after I've mixed it to put it all together. And um, I'll go ahead and add any adverts like voiceover drops, um, some extra effects to give it a little bit more flavor and things like that. Some people or some DJs um, will class this as cheating and it's not the art of DJing, but be honest, it is because it takes 
talent and skill and musical knowledge and musical ear to actually produce these mixes. Um, I'm sure if you listen to one of my live mixes in comparison to one of my full length mix series, you would probably notice a difference, you might not, but I think any DJ would because there's a lot more um, trickery, I'll do a lot more kind of scratches and cuts and just things I wouldn't normally do in a live mix. So there's two ways to look at it. Now, if you're making, a, should we say a 30 minute mix of your favorite new house tracks of March or April we're going into, um, what you do, you just literally go through your music, source which tracks you 100% want to put into the mix, Try and work out an order which you feel will um, kind of flow musically, if that makes sense. You don't want to start off with a banger and then drop yourself down to something quite mellow. Um, you can, but what I'm saying is that's going to kind of get rid of the initial impact and make people maybe bored. So you do want to start off with a bang. I wouldn't say to start off completely mellow and build your way up all the way through because people like to, you know, know what they're listening to and from the first 30 seconds to a minute, they're gonna decide whether they're gonna carry on listening to that mix. So starting with an impact is important, but um, I definitely advise you to spend a lot of time researching your tracks, doing your preparation, and um, do it that way. It's entirely up to you. If you wanna ask me any questions about the mastering process, um, which programs I use, how I actually do it, by all means do so, I'll do a video on that. But today I just really wanted to get into the depth of the difference between making a live mix and making a um, non-live mix, okay? So two completely different things with the same result, but it depends on the initial goal. I hope um, today's video has been helpful and a useful response to the DJ that asked me. If you want to know any further um, info on this subject, as I just said, hit me up in the comments below or on Twitter, which will come up at the end of this video, and I will be happy to help. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.